From LA Late Headquarters in Santa Monica, this is Afternoons LA Late. It's a big afternoon of Afternoons LA with your Force to Must Check update of 2021. Direct from Santa Monica as the recon will get done. The Vice President speaks out today and says the recon will get done. I have the latest details in the negotiations. This is as Democrats have feared that Americans don't know that there is a recon. <laughs> Not so much for you. You know all the details. And if you don't, you will by the end of this video. The price is right. Where we land somewhere between 1.7 and 2 trillion. What's the magic number? I have the latest details in this big afternoon's broadcast. Then, which programs are in and which ones are out and which ones have been reduced? Major developing breaking news today. This is the big update. This and plus evenings LA. Big updates about housing and items across the board. Then, student loan debt forgiveness. More debt could be forgiven instantly. Which, how much, and where? It's all deliciousness in this recording. Then, COLA is getting raised up, but now one of the number one legislators wants to raise your benefits up. If you are on SSI and SSDI in the next few weeks thereafter, it's fist stimulus that's heating up. Then we look back at the one and a half year anniversary of this channel tomorrow. This channel turns one and a half years old as you and a family together. And we learn about what we've seen over the last year and a half. We'll look back on the first year and a half of this channel and the first 140 million views. And we'll have a um, balloon in the set that's sort of off center. <clears throat> It's a leaf balloon. You'll meet the leaf balloon. It's not as good as the Mitch ball, but you know, only in Los Angeles when I go to ask for a birthday balloon, I get a leaf. <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big afternoon's Allied broadcast. How messed up is a leaf balloon? But you know, it's artistic. And with that, this is how I like. <laughs> Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a beautiful day and hope the weather is good where you are. It, it is bitterly cold here in Southern California because the deal is happening <laughs> and it's heating up in Washington, D.C., but a major storm is coming to the West Coast. I have the latest details of what's going on with that deal. The price is right. Where will the deal be and how many years of programs? I have the latest breaking news at afternoons. Then items in, items out. Big breaking news. This is the latest update. Totally new this afternoon, different than last night. Programs in, programs out, and programs being reduced. Saloon loan debt. More debt could be forgiven. I have the latest details on that as well. Then as we look back on the first year and a half of this channel, well, guess what? More student loan debt could be forgiven. Who student loan debt? And then the first year and a half of this channel, what have we learned over that duration? And what have we learned going forward? I have the latest details of what? <laughs> Half a graphic. Don't you love that? Oh, it's gone and then it comes back. It's about as difficult as getting a darn balloon for a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big afternoon show. And, you know, I'm here with you with my guest star, The Leaf Balloon. <laughs> It's hard to get a stimulus package together, and it's very hard to get a birthday balloon, apparently. And this, <laughs> this is Ally. So subscribe. 400,000 subscribers to YouTube record and a leaf balloon to join us as well. Like the video. Two, 3,000 likes. You'll meet the leaf balloon later this broadcast and consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Let's go into this incredible recon, which the Vice President of the United States briefed us today. It will be done. It's going to be done. It absolutely will be done. And the recon will be a big payday for the viewers of this channel. My viewers across the board will be looking at about $15,000 from this recon when it's finished. You're going to look at about $15,000 if you're a single individual married couple, children without children, SSI, SSDI, uh, with children, without children, employed, unemployed, because this $15,000 is across three clusters of checks, some staying in there, some staying out. Let's go over all the incredible details starting right now with the first of three clusters. These are clusters that were passed by the House subcommittee three weeks ago. Some of the provisions in these clusters have been removed. 
some reduce. What is the status update? Get that pen and paper ready. Here are the details. Hazard pay and four thousand dollars of elder care staying in there at the moment. Hazard pay brought in the eligibility of the earned income tax credit and increasing the amount of money. Four thousand dollars of elder care staying in there per year, up to four thousand dollars a year for young children's care. Grants the college students so far reportedly staying in there. This is directly to them into the university and also the Pell's grant made tax free. Then money to repair your home in a low income community so far still in there. A lot of these details we don't have updates on. Sometimes we have updates, things were removed, but no update that it's been removed at all. Great news if you're in a low-income community, free grants to repair the homes. One thing that we do have an update from the first cluster, of course, is that child care tax, that child care um, money, the CTC. Not going to be 51000 not going to be 15 years or 18 years or 10 years or 5 years. It's going to be one year, $3,600 or $3,000 per child. Then they got money in there for bikes, cars, and trucks, all electric, all U.S. auto manufactured. 50% for the purchase price of a new electric bike, $7,500 for the purchase price of a new electric vehicle, personal use, and a little bit more if it's for business use. That is the first cluster of checks passed and their status now on afternoons. As we go to the first add-on, you know who that first add-on is. It's Maxine Waters, who's looking to add on $25,000 for first-time home buyers across the board. This would be $25,000 to go for the purchase price of a new first home Maxine Waters once put in there. My no update about this, my prediction, not this type of money. Maybe something, but not $25,000. But... I do have updates on Maxine Waters' other provision. This is brand new on this show right now. I had told you that in these three clusters, there is a provision in there that was passed in the House subcommittee three weeks ago of $200 plus million, billion dollars for rent assistance, which is enormous because Third Stimulus only provided $47 billion and it paid you a lot of money. Viewers of this channel have gotten $40,000 of rent. And with $40,000 of rent, that was based upon a $47 billion rent program. Maxine Waters has $200 billion in there. There was threat it was going to be completely removed. There was threat it was going down as low as $100 billion. Guess what? The latest update today is huge, that it may come in somewhere between 100 to 175 Very big number. Maxine Waters should be very happy. You should be very happy. This is free rent. This is utilities. This is mortgage assistance. This is homeowners assistance as well. Big win for Maxine Waters, the legislator from Los Angeles. Now let's go to the second cluster checks, which ones are in and which ones are out. Here we go. In the second cluster check, we have more home repairs and then we have paid leave. Paid leave is the Nancy Pelosi uh, baby. This is paid family leave, paid medical leave, child care credits as well, household tax credits in there as well. Then uh, dental, uh, then uh, pre-kindergarten, totally free, community college, totally free, and weatherizing your home. All right, let's go over the status of this second cluster checks. Which ones are in, which ones are out? None of them are out so far. All of them are still staying in there. Great news as well. Well, weatherizing your home, definitely need to have it in there, <laughs> especially if the moderate Democrats are on the roof. As I always say, keep the moderate Democrats out of the House and wherever possible, keep them out of the Senate. So all these provisions still in there. Good news for that one. Which ones are the battlegrounds mean they could get reduced? Paid family and medical leave. Very costly provision. $1,700 a week if you make $70,000 or more per year. Nancy Pelosi's fighting to keep it in there. It's staying in there, but it's getting uh, it's getting bad. Mattered. Community free, uh, community college totally free, staying in there, according to Pelosi, get, but getting battered as well. It's not going to be a lifetime. It's not going to be five years. It'll either be one or two years of free community college. Wow. There you go. Let's go to the second add on, and that's come from Bob Casey. This one's a big price tag, folks $250 billion. What do I think is going to happen with this in a second? Well, this is home health care, paid family home health care. You're single, excuse me, you're, you're disabled or you're a senior and you cannot afford home health care. Bob Casey, the wonderful 61 year old Democrat from Pennsylvania senator, wants to give you this home health care. This provision would allow your daughter and son to go back into the workforce and know how longer I have to stay home and take care of you because home health care is too expensive. So what do I think about 250? I don't think it's happening at that number. Maybe he got it reduced, but $250 billion would be uh, one 
eighth of the total price tag of the recon. I don't see it happening at that number. And then that brings us to the clustery of the clusters, the most clustered of the clusters, uh, which is the third one. This is a cluster mess. This is where you see provisions actually falling out. This is where you see provisions in major trouble. Let's go over them right now. Get that pen paper ready. Free school meals for all checks, cheaper prescription medication, checks for farmers, checks for elections, checks for a clean energy, checks for workers, checks for Medicare, dental, vision, and hearing, and here we go. So Bob Casey, same Senate Democrat, wants to make the eligibility age for Medicare draw from 65 to 60. I can exclusively report. So far, that looks like it's in there. Which provision in there is out? Clean energy. If you've been watching this channel over the last week and a half, this is why we have a deal. This is why we have a deal, because this was a non-starter for Joe Manchin. So that provision, or at least most of that provision, out. It doesn't mean all climate's out, just that provision. The big battleground, of course, is the dental vision and hearing from Bernie Sanders. I'll be going over that late in this video. Stay with me because I'm going to go over where that's coming in, how many years, wow, how it's getting paid out. And then I think the cheaper prescription medication got modified because that was a Chris and Sinema provision. Then we go to those MSCs, IRS MSCs. The push is still underway to put them in there. And what's important to remember when we're talking about the MSEs, the push to put them in there comes from both the House and Senate side. Where are we in this entire process? We're trying to get to a write-up of a potential House bill for next week so that a House vote on that potential House bill would be next week. But that doesn't mean that's the determining factor of everything. Why? Let's go over the details. The negotiations that are going on right now are the senior parts of the Democratic Party, the highest echelon. It is Nancy, Chuck Schumer, the president, and then sporadically Bernie Sanders and sporadically maybe a Jalapal. It's not Liz Warren who certainly has a say in the situation. It is not AOC. It is not Omar. They certainly have a say in the situation. So when do they get their say? When they're presented whatever's written up. They have their say when they have whatever pre presented to them. And when would it be presented to them? That is their opportunity to change the language. Omar's office told viewers this channel this week that she will change the language when presented to her to add that monthly stimulus check on the House side. We've heard the same thing from Pelosi, and we've also heard the same thing from Jalapal across the board on the House side. When they then send it over to the Senate, then what comes next? Well, the final two days, the Votorama, which is a critical time in which people can add stuff in there. And that is when they can add those MSCs in there. And who represents they're going to do it? Chuck Schumer told Debbie Applegate last two weeks ago, told Donnie's wife the week before, told another viewer last week as well, that he'll be adding that provision when it lands in the Senate. We've also had Coons, Casey, Warren, Schumer, all telling viewers this channel, thousands of viewers over the last few weeks, they're adding it on the Senate side. Now, let's understand what this means added on the Senate side. We will see potentially a House bill next week. That is not the finish line. That's not the finish line because then they can make changes before a House vote. Then when the House approves something, that's not the finish line because when it goes over to the Senate, the senators can add stuff in totally brand new during a two-day event called the Votorama. The Votorama has been big, big business for the viewers' of this channel since earlier this year. It started when Liz Warren and Chuck Schumer said, we're going to be getting the president to forgive some student loan debt. Not the House members, us senators are. So we need at Votorama in third stimulus to insert a provision that says forgiven student loan debt is not a taxable event. They got it in there. In spring of this year, Liz Ward and Chuck Schumer added that provision in there. And you know how big that is? Had they not added it in there, this House members didn't have it in there. They didn't even talk about it. Had the senators not added it in there, then when your student loan debt is forgiven of $30,000 or $40,000, you would have to pay the IRS upwards of $20,000 of taxes. Yes, now that that provision was added in Votorama on third stimulus, it means your debts are now not taxable. So... That is what Leader Schumer represents about that MSC. Finally, what's important to go over is that you need to advocate until we're over the finish line. Here comes the message from the number one chief of staff, who is a senator. Uh, the senator's chief of staff, which is the number one person in D.C., 
uh, for that senator says the following to the viewers channel. They now have in total between congressional and House Senate offices receive more advocacies from the L.A. Purple Power than the American petition. Everyone's amazed by the outpouring of touching stories. They now have more better understanding of what people are going through this pandemic. They have heartbreaking stories and they are the voice that people across the nation in you, Ally, as you have become too loud to become ignored. They're very, very kind words. Let's read the last sentence on air together because it concerns you and me. The last sentence says, please continue your encouragement for the continued advocacy as the professional voice of the people you have become allied until this becomes law. Very, very kind. So what is it saying? It's a message for both me and you. That it says to me to encourage you to continue to advocate. Absolutely. How many calls did you make last week to advocate? How many calls are you going to make this coming week? Because this is not the finish line. The House bill is not the finish line. You need to advocate before we have a House bill, after we have a House bill, before we have a House vote, after we have a House vote, before we have a Senate voterama, and while we're having a Senate voterama. A lot of advocacy needed because this is where the battleground is. And the second half of this video, you're going to see how battlegrounds are. You have literally provisions changing by the minute, by the hour. People are negotiating for things. And we are here to make negotiations happen for us as well. A deal is happening. The vice president speaks today and says a deal will be happening, and it will. All the latest details on where that deal is on this very afternoon. I told you that Americans don't know this recon exists, and the, in the second half of this video, you're going to learn more about this recon, why it pays you upwards of about $15,000 as soon as it becomes law. The price is right. The price doesn't matter if it's $1.7 to $2 trillion for you. I'll explain the latest details, and here comes the meat and potato, the best and most important part of the recording. You know this is the part you stay to. Where I go over more details, which programs are in, which one's out, which one's in jeopardy today, which one's getting modified, and where the battleground is. Then additional $10,000 student loan debt could be forgiven at any moment. I'll go over the latest details on that. Fifth stimulus is heating up. Very exciting news. As one legislator is ready to call the vote on that fifth stimulus in just a few weeks, what are the details? And then, as we look to tomorrow, this channel turns a, hundred, a year and a half old, you and I. Over that last year and a half, this channel has amassed 140 million views. We look forward to and back on the things that we've learned over the last year and what we as a community have grown as. We look at how those details have shaped us and how they shape us going forward. I have more about that. And of course, our wonderful leaf uh, balloon <laughs> in the second half of this video. Stay with me as Afternoon's Ally continues. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. They're Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LLA. And the excitement continues right now, on, right now on Afternoons L8 as the vice president says the deal will be happening. I have the latest breaking news on Afternoons right now. Why are Americans unaware of this recon? I have what's going on with the Democrats and the ability to inform the Americans about this recon. The price is right. Where would land? Somewhere between 1.7 to $2 trillion. Does it affect you? It does somewhat the, the length of the programs. I'll explain how long the programs will run at those price tags. 
programs in, programs out. This is perhaps the most important part of the recording. It is the meat and potato. We go over which programs have been removed, which programs have been reduced, and what's going on with those add-ons. Soon loan debt, more debt could be forgiven. This is huge. And then if this stimulus coming around the corner in just a few weeks, then we look over the first year and a half of this channel, what we have learned as a family going into a big weekend and what we have learned over the last few weeks as well. I have all those details and more, so subscribe. 400,000 subscribers a YouTube record and 140 million views in a year and a half. I really appreciate your in patronage over that time and we got a lot of shows today. Coming up next is Evenings LA, which is totally new this evening. Then we go into Evenings Countdown at six o'clock. Street and Stimulus at seven and then we got shows eight, nine, 10, 11, 30, all across the board, all about your stimulus, your fourth stimulus, because the programs discussed today are the same that were discussed then. So subscribe, 400,000 subscribers, a YouTube record, I want you part of this family. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like the video and consider becoming a member. Let's go into the one thing that no one saw coming and boy, it's huge, as a push is underway to really get big sums of money out the board and that comes from the President of the United States. The President of the United States is really trying to get this recon down, done by the 11th hour. A series of comments came out from his inner team today and what is going on, let me go over the details, as a deal will be happening. The deal will be happening and the deal means that they're looking to formulate a, for a verbal agreement today or tomorrow and then get it for a vote next week on the House side. The White House um, is ready to get it finished. The press secretary said it today the president has rolled up his sleeve and is deep in the spreadsheets and the numbers. Uh, the press secretary said that the reason why it's taking the amount of time of details is because, like Social Security and other federal programs years ago, these are historic packages that are going to take many years that have that are that are going to be many years old and they're historic. The quote was, progress is here because a historic package that will put in place systems and programs that have never existed in our society before. Fascinating. So a lot of these programs will be totally brand new. This is why it's important to stay on this channel because you have never heard of these programs. You've never seen these programs. And when the program debuts, you're going to wonder, how do I get this money? I'm going to show you how to get these historic programs. Next, the vice president says, in a, in a visit to New York City, that quite frankly, I'm not only optimistic, I'm confident that we are reaching a deal. Let's go over all the details that came right before their comments, which were the following. On Friday, we had two quotes, which were fascinating. Pelosi said 90% of the recon writing and verbal agreement is done. Pelosi said more than 90% of everything is agreed upon and written. We're exuberant party with many points of view, and we built on a consensus, and we've gotten this done. A different comment came from House Ways and Means Committee Chair Richard Neal, which he said, we've already done all the policy outcomes. We've agreed on the policy outcomes. Now we have to finish the path on the revenue side. Do I agree with his comment? No. I think his comment is uh, is puffery. I think it's a little bit embellished. I don't think that's true. I don't think they've agreed on all, all the policy remarks because we have comments after Richard Neal, who tends to sometimes be a little bit embellished. And I don't think they're finished on every policy element. But what are the revenue sides? That's the back end. And this is big. The president had said during a Thursday town hall meeting on CNN, which no one watched. <clears throat> You're watching me, of course. No one watched it. Uh, that the Chris and Sinema told him, never going to pay a penny, never going to vote in favor of raising corporate taxes, never going to vote in favor of raising taxes on billionaires. Do it some other way. So the president has found other ways to pay on the revenue side, how to pay for the recon, which involves basically closing tax loopholes. Those are international, domestic, high net worth individuals and tax enforcement. And that is great news. Steny Hoyer, who's the majority leader on the House, he tells you when you vote, when to have a lunch, and what's the salad du jour today. Uh, he says, <laughs> I've been hoping we get a deal done for the last three months. That's actually his quote. Uh, he says, obviously, we're hoping to get this done by Friday so that 
if it's all ready for a vote, if they're ready, that's the quote, then we would re- get this ready for a vote next week. Stephanie Murray, she's a representative from Florida. She's a Democrat. And her quote is critical and very important for you to listen to. This is perhaps one of the most important quotes of the recording. She basically says, while there's significant progress and focus on how Senate members, House members have a lot of input on the bill. I think I would be, it would be really wise to engage with me and see why. Why is that? Why am I saying that's very important? Because you do not have every House member look in the House at the bill yet or a draft of the bill. You do not have every senator looking at a draft of the bill. And so when they get it, they're going to say, making changes, making changes. And guess what changes are needed? Add-ons. That's where MSC equation comes on. Then Joe Biden said uh, to Americans on a Thursday town hall press conf- town hall on CNN that no one watched, that Kristen Sinema would not support the corporate taxes and the wealth tax, but that Joe Manchin was the reason why the dental and vision is in jeopardy. <clears throat> I love that. He didn't tell the Americans that it's also himself that's the cause of the dental and vision in jeopardy. Why? I'll explain to you in a second. Jalapal said that the deal would happen. We're going to get them both done. There are differences. We Everyone knows the differences. We have to bridge them and come together. And we will deliver both of these to the, to the president's table. Senator Chris Kuhn said, um, we're getting there. The gaps are closing. The vibe of the caucus is totally different. And John Tester says, we've moved along pretty real well. What is my input on the situation? What is my um, what is my analysis of the situation? My analysis of the situation is that the president has been a pivotal person in determining where to remove provisions to get it moving. And what happened a week and a half ago when Joe Manchin's position was finally heard by some of the White House? It is now apparent that over. The last few months, the reason why we did not have a recon ready for vote was because Joe Manchin set a provision, set a position, Chris and Sinema set a position, and the White House did not take their positions seriously and just sort of scoffed at it and tried to demonize them. Unfortunately, now the White House is doing exactly what Sinema and Manchin had asked for. And had the White House done it then, we would have had a deal then. What was Sinema's provisions? The taxes. Now the White House has found another way to do the taxes. The White House could have done this several weeks, several months ago. On the mansion side, this is a more serious issue. The mansion side is really quite shocking. Mansion's provision that was a non-starter for him was a clean energy provision. And the reason why Joe Manchin didn't want it in there was it was a provision that would immediately make unemployed millions and millions of citizens of his home state overnight in the middle of the pandemic, right before the holidays. He wasn't going to agree to it. And in fact, he told the president he was never going to agree to it. And that should have been heard by the president. He should have taken it out months ago. Now it's out. That's why Joe Manchin has been nirvana. Joe Manchin has absolutely said to everyone, thank you. Now we can get this done. That was a provision. It was a non-starter. So it seemed as though there was someone in that White House that was not uh, that was being a little bit too stubborn and wasn't listening to two very clear voices take things out. Once they took them things out, then they got it to a price point. It also appears that personalities have helped. Jalapal and Joe Manchin get along very well, she says to us. So that has also really helped in the equation. Bringing the price tag down was very simple. And whose fault was this again? Not to point fingers, but I guess I am. The president is his fault. The president wanted 20-year programs. He wanted 20-year programs was a seven trillion. Then he agreed to 3.5 trillion, which would be 10-year programs. Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, early in the equation said, "I don't want to do 3.5 trillion dollar recon; just do shorter programs." And the president scoffed at it, and now it dragged on for months. So at 1.7, 1.9, 2 trillion, it means that the programs are running anywhere from one to five years. The average is about five years. Great for us because you want big, bold checks right now, next year, and this and, and the year after that. Three years of checks. Average program will be about three to five years. Some programs, of course, will be less, but that is great news across the board. And that is why the president's decisiveness and perhaps telling someone in his administration, stop being stubborn, take it out, reduce it, modify it, is what worked. He's been decisive, the president. He's showing leadership, says Debbie Dingell. And Patty Murray says his real consensus. And Steny Hoyer says, we're on the success towards the ends. The president's number, two trillion. My predicted number, one nine. Joe Manchin and the moderate Democrats, one one seven, but would go to one nine. That's why I think it will be about one nine. 
what provisions are in and what provisions are out. Let's go over all the details of that. Here is the meat and potato of the recording, the part where you're waiting for. So we have, um, we're going to go over timeline, we're going to go over big cuts, and then we're going to go over the latest details. Timeline. Pelosi said it was very possible to get to an agreement by the end of this week. We still have one more day in the week. We continue to be on schedule. We have our goal. We have our milestones. And we have every milestone along the way in our timetable. I've changed more diapers than anyone in this room. That was Pelosi. I, I think I'll probably put that on a frame. <laughs> <laughs> then big cuts. Ben Cardin says expect more big cuts. And then Chuck Schumer says, we want to finalize a deal by the end of this week so that we all keep must keep moving together next week. Um, so where are the provisions? And what is the latest update? First, Nancy Pelosi on uh, paid leave, which is very expensive. That means you have to stay home because of work, because your wife is pregnant, your son broke his leg is $1,700 a week if you make $70,000 a year. It's a very expensive provision. She says it's staying in there uh, because I, I changed more diapers than anyone in this room. Uh, and, and that community college is in there. Do I think community college is going to stay in there? Not a lifetime. The latest update in community college is it's either out one year or two years, which I, I think two years makes sense. Uh, four years, why are you at community college for four years? Uh, it doesn't make sense why you're community college for four years. It doesn't make sense to do community college for one year because a lot of classes require, a lot of people need to be at community college for two years. So I think you really have to do it at two years to make it sense. And I think that's what they're looking at. Obamacare subsidies staying in there. The dental, vision, and hearing care. This is a provision that is literally front page news every 10 seconds. It's in there. It's staying in there, but it's getting hacked to death. Uh, this is Bernie's provision. He wants a lifetime. The president appeared on the CNN town hall and said, Joe Manchin wants it out. The president didn't tell the CNN town hall that he wants it out after three years. Yeah. So the president doesn't want it more than three years. Bernie is fuming angry that he wants a lifetime. And then the president considered vouchers, which I guess is a forbidden word. I guess it's like lip syncing or something. Or... or, or <laughs> Or auto-tune. It's just one of those horrible words you can't say. Electricity performance program out. That is the clean energy provision for Joe Manchin. And salt, very bad for your um, for your intestines. Uh, that is out. That is the cap on staying local and tax deductions. The rent, which is the, well, the housing, which is the rent, the mortgage assistance, the utilities. As you heard on this video, big win for Maxine Waters. We now know it was literally out the door. <laughs> it was two hundred billion dollars, and then poof, gone. Then it came in, in back in at a hundred billion. Really, uh, still good at a hundred billion because the third recon had it at forty-seven, and now it looks like it's coming in at a hundred to a hundred fifty billion. Boy, she does her magic. It's staying in there, and this is big. So if you have an issue of rent, utilities, mortgage assistance, you've got another third stimulus, which is still paying out. There would be more of it next year as well, all the way into uh, probably late next year. It could be many, many months of rent across the board. Um, what's important to understand is that there was that one person who wanted that child care at four years, which would be 500. No, she went at five years. <laughs> With inflation uh, tied to it, indexed to it, that would be five hundred fifty-six billion, a quarter of the price tag of the entire recon, not happening. So, some of the comments I've seen in the last twenty-four hours have been the following: Do I think there's going to be a vote next week? I think there will be. I think there will be. Uh, what are they doing between today and tomorrow? Sort of the the, the the we really are at the discretion of off the record sources. What's important to understand is that this recording, this recording is not the result of the president coming out and say, uh, housing is down to $100 billion. It was out, and it's back in at $100 billion. The, or the press secretary. No one's telling us this. This is, not, this is not a debriefing from the legislators by the hour on the hour. This is inside information, close to the negotiations, to sourced uh, news outlet, to a sourced news outlet. That sourced news outlet and myself are the only one going over all the provisions. If the source news outlet does not have that source providing someone close to the negotiations, you don't have any update about the provision. We also don't potentially have um, any update that is groundbreakingly different right now than maybe different two hours from now. That's not to say, so the reason why I'm saying this is very simple, <laughs> cut to the chase, boy, is that we 
there may be negotiations going on right today. They may be removing provisions right today. They may be adding provisions right today. But the sources for that off-the-record information are not necessarily providing the updates at the very moment at the time of this recording. So I don't want you to think that Congress is gone. I believe they're in town. I believe they're negotiating the provisions. I do believe Richard Neal is embellishing it. I do not think they're done with all the policy, which would be all the provisions before the add-ons, before voter rom and things like that. I think Nancy Pelosi is embellishing it as well when she says it's 90% written up. Uh, yeah, what do you mean 90% written up? We all know you have to, we all know most of it's written up because they can't write in seven days, clearly. Um, but I don't think all of it's written up. And I think the biggest embellishment of this... <laughs> is a tail monster. Uh, when she says these are historic programs that are going to be brand new, and that's why it's taking so much effort. No, <laughs> it's not because they're historic. It's, even though they are historic, it's because the deal items are very, very extenuated. There's a lot of mathematics involved. What you need to know is that there's a lot of programs that'll pay you a lot of money, upwards of $15,000 on average to the viewers of this channel, and as soon as that becomes law, I'm going to show you how to get this money. You've not seen these programs before. This is not something you saw from second stimulus, not something you saw from third stimulus. These are new programs, new sums of money. And as soon as they become a law, I'm going to show you how they become a law. And with that, we go right into student loan debt. More debt could be forgiven across the board. Whose debt is this? This is another round of debt of $10,000. The president said he'll forgive $10,000 of student loan debt. Why are the Democrats not taking it? I have no idea. They should. The president will not go to $50,000, and the Democrats should take the $10,000. So people's debts could be dropped at least by $10,000 during the holidays. And then the Democrats could continue to push the president next year to go to the full remainder of the $50,000. The president has already forgiven three rounds of student loan debts, they are, first, individuals who became disabled after graduation. Your debts have been forgiven. Second, people who work in the nonprofit sector 10 years after graduation, your debts are now forgiven. And finally, people who have gone to work in the public sector for the last 10 years, your debts were forgiven by the president just days ago. This is huge. If you work for the city, the county, the state, the federal government for 10 years after graduation, your debts are now forgiven. I believe the president's offer is great. It would be by executive order. It would not need a stimulus package or a recon. Democrats should take it. COLA, this is huge. This is really huge. Your benefits are going up 5 to 6% next year because of the COLA step up that's been announced to you by Social Security Administration. You probably got the letter, but guess what? We're not done there yet because fist stimulus was always going to come right behind for stimulus. That's why it's called fist stimulus. Uh, people don't call it fist stimulus. I call it fist stimulus because we're counting them one at a time. A new report out this week, which refers to it as the third Biden recon, aka a fist stimulus, uh, says that the one of the big big, important people in the Democratic Party is ready to do it. It's House Budget Chair John Yarmuth, who's a Democrat from Kentucky, and he's met with Nancy Pelosi in the last few days and said, I'm ready to do this stimulus, and we're going to do it next year. We're going to do it by recon. We're going to pile in all of the Medicare expansion, child care, senior care, depending on what we want to put in or not put into this package, and do it by recon. Force the Republicans to vote against it, and I don't see where it's a downside election year because we're trying to do things that are really popular. Brilliant idea. Not only were they going to always do fifth stimulus, now they're using this as an ammunition against the Republicans for the midterm elections. Basically saying, hey, we did by recon a raise up of your benefits if you're on SSI and SSDI. And Republicans wanted to vote it against it. They didn't want to give it to you. Who do you want to vote for in the re-election? Brilliant idea. So let's go over fifth stimulus because it's very, very deliciousness. First, your benefits are going to raise up under COLA raise, but that's not the first time that they're going to raise in the next year. Then, under fifth stimulus, they're going to raise you up an additional time. If you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Railroad benefits, veterans benefits, a one-time lift on top of this number. Then they're going to apply a new benchmark. The new benchmark is inflation, and inflation is going to be 1% to 3% next December. So that means that you're going to get three step ups, one, two, three. Remember, once your benefits step up, they never step down. They're going to remove the asset cap, dating back to a 1980s law that says you can't stay on benefits and also have more than $3,000 on hand. It's going to go away. They're going to remove the income cap, dating back to a 1960s law that says you can't work and stay on benefits. It's going to go away. And then the marriage penalty is going to end, and love is going to win, and you'll be able to marry your longtime love interest. And there you go. That is why fifth stimulus is so exciting.
As we look to tomorrow, we look forward to the one and a half year anniversary of this family. Who knew when I pressed record on an empty beach in the middle of the pandemic as Americans and Southern Californians were on complete lockdown, that I would create a community where we'd have friends, where we'd go into the live chat and interact with one another and ask, did you burn the lasagna at lunch? <laughs> Yesterday during one of the chats, someone said, can you all stop talking about food? I want to focus here. And it's important to understand that when you have a community, sometimes you're really not sure where things are going. And uh, early on, when I en enabled the feature of live chats in this channel, I did not know if that was good or bad to have people talking about lasagna while I'm talking or talking about their new roller skates. And shortly, I realized it is good because it's a community. It's people that remember each other from the video two hours earlier. And you have the lasagna, you to burn it. Oh, but was it still good? Oh, it was. And that's part of a community because as a family, you have a commonality. You have a commonality that is not politics. You have a commonality that is love and information and improving yourselves. And that commonality brings you from point A to point Z. We measure it all in different steps, whether it's getting $10 off of the electric bill or getting a $500 payback from the utility company, or getting $40,000 of rent, or getting $300 of rent, or learning that you got a refund check for taxes that you paid on unemployment benefits. Any of these things as an incremental win, and when we applaud one another, we feel good, not only about ourselves, but also that person who got the money. And it was that type of spirit that embodied this channel <laughs> <laughs> on New Year's Eve, when people said, would you do a New Year's Eve show? Uh, yeah, because there's actually no nightclubs open. It's the middle of the pandemic. <clears throat> there's no bars open. It's closed in the middle of the pandemic. And yeah, I mean, what's what's left? <laughs> Mitch Ball, that's what's left. <laughs> and someone asked me the other day, is the Mitch Ball still around? I think I saw the Mitch Ball. It's very deflated, uh, emotionally and functionally. Uh, but the Mitch Ball is still around. So in the true spirit of, of a one year half half anniversary, I try to get a balloon for today. And you would think that even in the most robust time of the economy, as Americans are back to work, that we're all cherishing, cherishing the wonderful weather and the holiday season, that there is a lot of birthday balloons out there. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> Supply chain problem. Supply all the all the birthday balloons are still in the tankers off in the Pacific Ocean. <clears throat> I, in fact, I was at the cashier's register. I said, "Can I have a birthday balloon?" We have none. <laughs> what do you mean? Then they actually had some balloons. Uh, they were beautiful. They were like diamonds. I said, uh, "I said, can I have some of those?" I said, "Those are just display. They're not for sale." Oh, okay. So we just put things up. We can't buy here. So, needless to say, I had to settle for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, the, the leaf balloon. Can you see the leaf balloon? Uh, it's a leaf. It's a, a leaf. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it has little veins. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I thought of putting it, you know, in front of the flowers. The flowers were very insulted to have them. their beautiful, their beautiful panorama blocked by, them, by themselves by something vinyl. Uh, but it's a leaf balloon. And the leaf balloon sort of embodies us in many regards because we are like an arteries. We're sort of like a family tree. We have all these different arteries that come back together. And when we come back together, where, where do we join? We join at the casino, of course. <laughs> no, we join here every day or whenever we can. Often some people um, are missing for a week or a time or two days at a time. Sometimes people come back in that I haven't seen for two months and I remember their names. And, and that is where community comes from. When I recognize your name, when you recognize someone else's face, when you remember a person, remember what they like and what they don't like, what they enjoyed and what they didn't enjoy. Because ultimately, society is digital, and it doesn't matter if it's on a YouTube channel or by texting, if it's on a cell phone or in a live chat. If you bring a community where people uh, enjoy one another, then you find that community. Early on during this channel, I often would bring a cell phone on set and and do part of the broadcast with Instagram. 
And I knew a lot of people found a, uh, upset a displeasure when the Instagram part was no longer featured because that was part of the community. After a little bit of nudging, <laughs> I said, come on into the live chat. And some of those people that were initially afraid that it was too clickish in the live chat, that they would not be in, in, invited among the people, that they were the Instagram group, that they would not be invited among the live chat, they were. This is always an inviting community, and it always will be an inviting community. Maybe not always with a leaf balloon, which sort of blew off set now. <laughs> there it is. Uh, maybe not always with a leaf balloon, but maybe, oh, there it goes. Um, but maybe um, always here. Uh, I appreciate all your incredible patience over the last year and a half, and we'll see what happens for tomorrow. <laughs> No guarantees. Uh, I'm not like Nancy Pelosi. I'm not going to guarantee you. Uh, tomorrow is imminent. It's just around the corner. It's uh, it, we're at the edge of the uh, we're we're at the edge of historicness. No, it's just Sunday. <laughs> There you go. And with that, join me next on Evening's Ally, which is going to be a big broadcast. This is in two hours from now. Coming up next is, evening, is Overnight's Crypto, but then at 5 p.m. is Evening's Ally. It's totally brand new tonight. Me and the leaf balloon will be black. We'll be back. Then join me at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10, and 11.30. All shows about four stimulus before we come back tomorrow morning at 3 and 3.30 a.m. Is a lot of nail biting. Don't forget to stop advocating. Don't forget to not stop advocating double negative there keep on advocating you can leave messages on senators voicemails on the weekend you can leave messages on house members voicemails on the weekend tell them why you need it why it's important remember this is not a one-step process several steps to be done and i'll see you on the next step as we go into a big evening's ally so subscribe 400 000 subscribers a youtube record i want you part of this incredible family join me in the leaf balloon next like the video to two, three thousand likes and consider becoming a member. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful afternoon. If you're in the middle of, Southern Ca middle of California, be careful because there is a very bad storm coming on in. It is a historical one as well. And with that, stay focused, stay smiling, and stay with LA for more.